what are the health risks that guys should consider if they're thinking about going on TRT? Someone comes to you and says, hey man, I'm whatever at an age where I feel like this is something that I want to do. Uh, what should I be concerned about? What would you tell them? Well, it depends the context in which they enter into that. Because again, if you don't actually need it and you get on it, you could be making yourself less healthy if you're already perfectly functioning, top tier, and you're just doing it because, I don't know, you wanted to look like Liver King or some shit. Like, I don't know. But if you don't, if you do need it and you're clinically deficient, you are, and again, not a med, not medical advice, but in general, you are going to be more prone to things like cardiovascular disease, neurodegeneration, et cetera. So it's kind of like, if you actually clinically need something to then say, what is the downside to TRT? It's like, what is the downside of not being on TRT at that point, potentially? That's the kind of how I would frame it for the actual clinical utility of it in a real deficient setting. It's kind of like, what could you be staving off by using it in a responsible way? It's kind of, mm -hmm. and again, I think this is where like Brian could come in and be educating and actually say, this is, you know, like he knows why stuff is actually useful and healthy or has actual utility in a clinical setting, but he very much, you know, foregoes that because it just doesn't, uh, fit the, well, up to now, it hadn't fit the narrative, essentially. Would you be surprised if the volume of drugs that it's likely that he's taken wouldn't have taken a little bit of uh, time off his health span? Oh, for sure. Yeah, it's definitely not conducive to longevity. The bigger you are, the more muscle you have. Okay, this is too vague of a statement, because I was about to say, if you have too much muscle, you're just going to die quicker. But in general... Humans who are bigger and have more demands from their organs to support their infrastructure are going to live a shorter amount of time in general. Like, to, like a small, tiny Asian woman is probably going to outlive the jacked brontosaurus human that's on a bodybuilding stage every single time. Why? Because of the stress and taxation it takes to support the demands of that tissue. So, And also, it, it depends how regulating you are of things like blood pressure are you letting it get out of whack do you have a resting heart rate of like is, are you like borderline tachycardia all the time with a hundred resting heart rate and you're never getting to sleep because you're so jacked up on androgens or like whatever like there are so many things that play into it and it's multifactorial for sure but in general if you are just a and again this isn't to say because there is definitely a push in the longevity community to be protein deficient and be as small as possible and be frail and just live a terrible life but live to a hundred plus like there needs to be a happy medium, in my opinion, for a high quality of life that's also trying to live as long as possible with that high quality. Because you're gonna die eventually, and do you want those years to be, you know, frail, like barely fucking functional in a chair? Probably not. So there's definitely a happy medium, but in general, the uh, the more you go super physiologic, the less healthy it is in all areas. Is kind of the best way to put it. That's a really good take, and I totally know what you mean with regards to the balance between longevity, uh, amount of years, and quality of those. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to feel good, perform well, be able to do a variety of tasks, and be able to live life to its fullest, or do you want to permanently be in this ambient anxiety about whether or not your oxalate level has gone through the roof because you didn't eat the right type of spinach this morning? Mm. Like That is... I think one of the concerns, I, I, I dug into the longevity community for a long time and uh, Dr. David Sinclair's been on twice and went to go meet him in Harvard and it was just after he'd been on Rogan and then I went to go and see him in Boston the week after that. He's getting a lot of heat recently. I've heard. Yeah. Uh, People think he's coordinating with the FDA to get NMN banned in the, the supplement industry. Do you think that's true? I haven't looked into this at all. <laughs> I haven't looked into it enough, but there is pretty damning suggestive things that don't look too favorable. And are people um, like attached to their access to NMN? Yeah, it's like, I don't even know if it has that much utility at the end of the day, but it's just the fact that he's trying to restrict people so then he can benefit from Interesting. It. Potentially, again. Yeah, 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 yeah allegedly. I, I, haven't, I saw one headline about this and didn't, I haven't read it yet. But it makes you also wonder, is it just because he's a big name that then has monetary upside now that automatically equals he's a piece of shit? Yes. That's often when people start making money off something that they were otherwise just talking about with seemingly no bias or mm -hmm. financial incentive, et cetera. You know, he's very much 
been on many podcasts and made it seem like, you know, I don't necessarily recommend it. It's just what I do. But he literally says uh, when people ask what NMN do you take? And he's like, I, I, yeah. like, I don't have a recommendation. He actually ended up, I think, starting to say Alive by Nature was the one that he uh, began using after a while. Something tells me the only reason that he gave up any brand that he uses was simply because he was sick of being asked which brand it is that he used. It was like a fucking yeah. just take anything from me. Yeah, it's a wild and odd scenario that I feel like the maybe not the exact same, but like Huberman or Sinclair, they often find themselves in a weird situation where they'll talk about something they feel is promising, but they're so influential that it then spurs people trying to buy it, as you would expect. And then when they ask him for his recommendation, he's like, do I just tell you a brand or are you going to then think I have some sort of yeah. like... Well, also you, you're adding in, I've done the due diligence about Tonga Ali and Fidoji Regrestis, let's say, and I've mm -hmm. looked at the, the data on the back end of that. You're going to then ask me for a supplement recommendation off the back of that, which now requires me to go and do a whole shit ton more yeah. investigation in order to see whether Double Woods or like Gorilla Mo or like what, whatever yeah. it is, is like the optimal product for me to go and take. Mm -hmm. So I, I understand the hesitation around that. But when I first spoke to David and the longevity, r slash longevity Reddit was going off, it's a very passionate community in a way that few others are. And I wonder how much of the longevity community's like real vehement um, ob obsession and, and uh, uh, passion for it is kind of like a denial of death thing mm. that inbuilt into the longevity community, you have to assume that there is a, a large minority, maybe even more of people who have found that as a techno utopia secular equivalent of trying to find eternal life that you would have done previously spiritually and if someone comes in and says starts to either criticize the community or restrict their access to supplements that they think is going to like get them to the promised land mm -hmm. they're going to respond in kind yeah yeah it's like if you design something from scratch like i how nmn came to be you know it's just like a basic thing that could be derived from like like for example nicotinic acid or niacin or any of these things that are very very overlapping these are readily available as supplements so i don't really know how the hype behind nmn came to be if it was just sinclair or what but it's definitely uh i don't know it's uh problematic when you know that the price of it is probably going to be exorbitantly higher than the supplement itself because it's going to be from pharmaceutical standards and prescribed to you and then it's going to involve some hiked up hiked up amount that it costs, et cetera. And um, yeah, like I can, I can see why he's getting backlash regardless, even if he feels like he deserves the monetary upside and he doesn't want to publicly say it, like he might very much feel like I'm the one who created the hype. Fuck you guys. I'm going to capitalize on it. What's happening, people? If you enjoyed that, then press here for the full unedited episode. And don't forget to subscribe. Peace.